Welcome to Lesson 8E, Steam versus Particle Plumes. This is going to be a qualitative lesson about steam versus particle plumes. I'm going to compare and contrast the two and then give a little fun quiz, name that plume at the end. I will show a PowerPoint presentation. That'll be the bulk of this lesson. Here's a quick summary of what you should learn from the PowerPoint presentation. Steam plumes have well-defined boundaries. They're white like clouds and they end abruptly, whereas particles or smoke plumes, those mean the same thing, have fuzzy boundaries. They're not well-defined. They can be various colors and a particle plume does not end. It just kind of slowly dissipates. And then here's an example of name that plume. Is this a steam plume, a particle or smoke plume, or some combination of both? And we can see these well-defined boundaries. We can see that it's white and we can see that it ends. This picture didn't go quite far enough to see it end, but this is obviously a steam plume. And you should be able to recognize this after watching the presentation. I have thumbnails for the PowerPoint slide on the website for this file that you can download six pictures per page. But right now I'll do the presentation. This slide presentation is taken from the Penn State Facilities Engineering Institute. We teach a course called Visible Emissions Training Program, or we just call it Smoke School. I'm going to talk about steam plumes, how to identify them, and you'll find that they're either a steam plume, a smoke, or particle plume, or both steam and particles in the same plume. And I'll talk a little bit about steam plumes in the media. So first of all, steam plumes are not regulated by EPA or any other government agency like DEP. The main problem with steam is that it gets in the way of the smoke or particle plumes that we want to read and that EPA is concerned about. So we have to learn to recognize steam plumes so we don't mistake them for smoke or particle plumes. So steam plumes, they look a lot like clouds. They're white, fluffy like this. Here's also a steam plume. This is an interesting picture that I took myself. This was the old smokestack from the coal burning power plant right across the street from my window in my office. And here is where they were testing the new natural gas boiler, which generated all this steam. It was also very noisy that day, as I recall, when I took the picture. So what are the characteristics of steam plumes? They have relatively sharp boundaries or edges. They're white like clouds and they end abruptly compared to particle plumes, which can extend for miles and just slowly dissipate. So here's two pictures that I took one day when I was driving along the road. The one on the left is a steam plume. The one on the right is a particle plume. You can see that the steam plume ends. It's white, has very well-defined boundaries, and it just ends. You can't see anything up beyond here. The particle plume, however, is harder to see here. It's very fuzzy. It uh, doesn't have well-defined boundaries, and it just doesn't end. It, uh, when I was there, I just could see that smoke go up forever. It just kept getting more and more dissipated or diffused. But it's very hard to see with this photograph because it got washed out by the sky. But in, with my eyes, I could clearly see that that particle plume went on forever. Here's some more pictures. This is Penn State's old steam plant where they had a bag house, but sometimes it would there'd be rips in it or they'd be cleaning or whatever. And I would be driving into work and see this brown particle plume that just kind of went on forever. Again, it just dissipates. There also is steam from a different part of the plant and a different little stack. And that's a steam plume in this same picture. Here's another picture of the same thing. Penn State's smoke from their power plant. This has all been torn down now, by the way. And here's a steam plume. Here's a smoke plume. There was hardly any wind that day, so they just kind of go straight up. Here's a steam plume with a dark mountain in the background from a paper mill. This is all white steam. This is called a detached steam plume. And what do we mean by that? Well, the steam is warm enough that when it comes out, the steam is not formed until a little bit above the stack exit. Now, I should mention that thermodynamically, steam is a vapor. But when we talk about steam in the air pollution business, they mean actually little droplets of water that have condensed. So the water vapor that comes out is a vapor. It's a gas. It's invisible. But it hits the cold air and it condenses into little droplets that we see as white cloud-like plumes, which are actually made up of millions of little tiny water droplets. This is a very interesting picture. It shows steam plumes. Now we're looking kind of into the sun at sunrise or sunset, so they look dark, and I'll talk about that more later. But these are steam plumes. They end in little puffs, and then there's nothing here. There's no particles in here. This one's attached, and this one's detached. Now I can tell why, because remember, when a plume is buoyant, it will come out of the stack and then level off at some higher elevation, whereas when there's no buoyancy, it just goes straight across. So this one does not have buoyancy. It's a 
cooler plume and the steam forms, the water condenses right at the stack exit or maybe even a little bit inside the stack before it comes out. So it's an attached steam plume. This one, the steam coming out is very warm, so it takes some time for it to cool down enough to start condensing. Once it condenses, then you start to see this, what we call a steam plume. So that's a detached steam plume. Here's one where it's steam attached, two plumes that merge, but then we see something else out here. So this is smoke. So there was smoke the whole way, but we don't see it because the steam has blocked the smoke. So we see the smoke out here. So this is a combination, both steam and smoke. smoke particles. I want to talk a little bit about the media. They often mislead the public. TV reports, books, internet photos, newspapers, anywhere you look, you're going to see steam plumes when they're trying to talk about air pollution or global warming or smoke. If you don't believe me, do a Google search for smokestack and you'll see what I mean. Almost every picture you see will be actually a steam plume, not a smoke plume. Why do they do this? Well, they probably don't know the difference sometimes. Steam plumes look more impressive, especially when you look right into the sun. And smokestack emissions have been cleaned up so much that it's really hard to find good smoke pictures anymore. So here's an example of steam. This is a cooling tower, so it's obviously steam. And yet this article is talking about smoke spewing out of one of their coal-fired power plants. This is all steam. Here's a picture looking directly into the sun, and you could tell that this looks like horrible black smoke, but it actually ends out here. So this is steam, not smoke. This is very misleading. Here's a recent publication that is attributing smoke in the Grand Canyon to a local power plant. So they have this inset showing this power plant. And that power plant may be contributing to some of the visibility reduction in the canyon, but everything I see here is steam and everything up here is clouds. I did a search for books about air pollution right before I made this video, and I found many examples. Here's just three of books about air pollution, and they show steam plumes instead of smoke plumes. There's no air pollution in here at all. These are all steam plumes, especially this one. And they should know better. They're authors talking about air pollution. Here's another example. These are all steam plumes, and yet the article's talking about how air pollution has put a break on global warming. Interesting article, by the way. So let's take a little quiz. I call it Name That Plume. I'll show you photographs and you tell me, are they smoke particle plumes, steam plumes, or smoke particle and steam plume? So smoke and particle mean the same thing. Smoke is made up of little particles. So it's either smoke or steam or both. Okay, this one is obviously smoke. Smoke particles do not end. This is in a, a town in India where they have all these kilns and there's no regulations. So all these kilns are producing this black smoke everywhere. We would never allow anything like that in this country. This one's steam. You can tell it has well-defined boundaries. Now, unfortunately, the photographer did not go far enough to see it end, but it would eventually end out here somewhere. This is a nice picture of a smoke particle plume. It doesn't end. I wish they would have shown a little bit further, but you can tell very black and we're not looking into the sun. These are three very nice steam plumes that have merged. You notice that they end out here, and it's hard to tell if these are clouds or possibly some particles, but you can see better with your own eyes, not from a picture. This one is smoke. It's black. It's coming from a chimney where they were burning wood or something, and you can see that it just dissipates forever. It doesn't end, and it has very fuzzy, not well-defined boundaries. This picture shows steam plume from a cooling tower, so that's steam. It ends about here. You're looking into the sun, so it looks dark. But then these two plumes, this one doesn't seem to be on, but these are producing particle plumes or smoke that goes forever. It doesn't end. Students, what about this one? That one's definitely a steam plume, dude. You say that's a steam plume, but look very carefully and you see that here's the steam that it ends, but then out here is some smoke that is hard to see, but that does not end. It just dissipates. Bummer, man. This is a beautiful picture of steam plumes, three that merge together and then they end out here. This is a picture I took one day of a smoke plume that was a very dark plume. It was kind of a cloudy day, but by eye, you could see much better that this plume just kept getting wider and wider. It was a pretty unstable atmosphere and it just mixed up, but it, it never ended. This is a fire. Now, this one is a little tricky because it's smoke from a fire, obviously smoke, 
but when you're burning something, wood or things like that have a lot of water content. So there's a lot of steam mixed in. And in this picture, it's very hard to tell where the steam ends and where the smoke begins. So the smoke and steam are all mixed together, but the steam would have to end somewhere here, but you really can't tell, possibly here. The rest is all smoke from there on. This is a picture of smoke. It's attached. It just keeps dissipating. Here's another example of both steam and particles. The steam here, kind of dirty steam here where the particles are starting to show through. And then once the steam is completely gone, then you have all particles here. This is a fire and that's black smoke. Here's a cloud, but you can see that black smoke just going up. So this is just smoke. Here's another example of both because you have steam. Steam ends. This is a good example. And then you see the smoke just going on forever. This is a couple pictures that I took of the old Penn State power plant. This is the steam plume, but it also had some particles in it from the bag house. Here's just steam here that ends, but this part is steam and particles. The particles are actually settling in this case. Here you can see a slightly different view of it, but the steam ends somewhere here, and then you have these white particles that are settling down slowly. So this is steam that ends, and this one has smoke and steam. Here's a, another picture of the power plant from very far away. There was hardly any wind that day, and the smoke was just spreading out very wide. That's all smoke. Okay, last one. This one's tricky. We're looking directly into the sun and it looks like a particle plume. They don't go quite far enough to be sure that it ends, but the key here is that this is detached. You never see a particle plume that's detached. So this has to be a steam plume, although this one's very tricky. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.